uh, what moved Jesus to do the miracles wasn't faith. What moved Jesus, the motivation behind those miracles was love. You teach power. Power needs to be demonstrated. It's not about teaching power. As God lifted the remnant of this nation, the children began to have an encounter in a genuine, pure, and impacting way like nothing they had ever felt before. To the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3. By faith, we understand. First of all, first we need to believe and then understand. There are many people trying to understand and then believe, That's and it's right. the opposite. When you go to the scriptures, we first believe, and then we understand. There is a problem when we come to minister miracles. Sometimes we want to have access to the presence of God and the power of God in our own knowledge and understanding and logic. There's some things that you don't understand. How come you understand? And pastor, what about, you know, I don't understand anything, but I can tell you this. When we walk by faith, when we understand that faith is the, the um, force, or whatever you want to call it, that God has given us to enter that supernatural realm, and then we can receive whatever you need. And there are many of you, you've been thinking, you've been praying, you don't understand what's going on, and you ask yourself, why this? Why this? Trying to understand. What about if you disconnect your reason for a moment? Yes. In order to receive a miracle, you need to disconnect your thinking, your logic, your common sense. Common sense, logic has their place. They got their place. So we don't walk by common sense. We need to understand we walk by faith. So I want to challenge you. If you're there at home, Pastor, do I have faith? Yes, you do. The Bible says the Lord has given us a measure of faith. So faith, when we're talking about faith, and in and, and chapter 11, verse 2, this is what it says. Now faith is. Now faith is. Now faith is not tomorrow. So many people are trying to receive miracles in the future. Or they say, well, miracles passed away. They don't happen anymore. Can I tell you, when we're talking about faith, if it's faith from God, the past and the future comes in one tense. Mm -hmm. That is in the now. So it is possible to receive your miracle now? Yes, it is possible. So faith is now. The glory of God is not something that you just study. It has to be revealed. It has to it's be a revelation. Given revelation. Okay. It, the Holy Spirit has to give it to you by your spirit. You receive it and then you will understand it. You will know it. So when, when you come into the revelation of the glory of God, it's not something that you study. Because you many people study the Bible, but they, they, they dead. I mean, they, they don't have the revelation. They need the spirit. This is what happened, Sid. When we got the presence without the word, you will have people walking into error. And when you have the word without the presence, you will have people dry and dead. So we need both. We need the word and we need the presence. So sometimes we are satisfied with only one message. When we come to church, we're looking to hear a message. But so many people want to see a message. How? How do you do it? Through revelation. You tell the people, reveal God. Where God is revealed, where God is worshipped in spirit and in truth, he will manifest himself. Every time, for example, I taught the church on God the provider. And if you have revelation, you must have manifestation. That is the difference between having information and revelation. And we have a generation of information, not revelation. There you go. There's so many people talking deep, but there's no movement. What do you mean? When you have revelation, revelation stimulates, activate, and produce movement. The glory of God is not based on a personality. It's based on truth. Any immature person will repeat the cycle of their life. You will repeat the cycle. But the greatest consequence of staying in an immature state, you know what it is? You will miss your destiny. That's the greatest
consequence of staying immature. You will never see in fullness what the Lord promised you. What the Lord said you were from the beginning of this world. Israel never got into the promise because of immaturity. I have seen men and women of God. I pray this morning and say, God, I don't want to miss my destiny because of childish things. I want to get into my destiny. I want to see the fullness of the blessing of God coming upon me and upon my family and upon the church. How many of you want to see God? Sometimes it's hard. And what's the solution? Put away. Put away. Make a decision today to say, you know what? I was offended. But I will forgive. I was, people attacked me, criticized me, rejected me. But you know what? I will forgive. I will not stay in the state of immaturity because I don't want to miss my destiny. Apostle Maldonado explained that 80% of believers need deliverance, but the majority of pastors don't believe in that ministry. However, the gospel of the kingdom of God brings deliverance in order to establish His government. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break every oppression, I break every curse, I break every spirit of sickness. I bind every spirit of witchcraft. Right now, I break your power. You are free now. I was so delivered today. I felt just the presence of the Father, a fire, just that I've never felt before here. And I'm being free for depression, fear, and for tormented spirits. Today I feel completely free after many years of unforgiveness and depression and thoughts of suicide. Apostle, ella es Samantha. Por nueve años ha practicado el lesbianismo. Estaba atada. Dice que cuando usted oró, sintió la presencia de Dios que descendió de ella. Y me estaba diciendo, yo no siento más atracción hacia las mujeres. Hay algo que me dice que me quiero. Tell me, well, what did you feel coming on? How do you feel now? I felt like something was off of my shoulders now. I closed my eyes and I seen light and I seen a picture of me and my future family with a guy. Aww. So even in Samuel, when Samuel, um, was something was happening and then at the end he goes, um, you know, who do I send? And, and, and Samuel had some confusion in his mind because he heard the voice of God and he didn't know what to do. And then Eli, Eli says, when that voice comes, you need to respond to say, here I am. In other words, that's what we need to respond. You know, the word call means to uh, an invitation to do the will of God. When somebody called, when God calls you, is an invitation to do the will of God. So when God called Isaiah, Isaiah, and then he answered, he said, here I am. And because of, in that assignment in ministry, you see our obedience touch, God can touch so many people. And I said to God, God spoke to me to go to Pakistan. And I brought the power of God and there were more than one million people in one place. Uh, I would say 900,000 people got saved because I said to God, God, here I am. It was a very dangerous trip. It was not easy, but God is a God. He protects us. When God sends you, He will protect you. He will provide. So I obey God. And as, as a result, He did it. The glory is always for Him. I'm not taking credit for it. I'm just saying, when God is looking for a vessel, a vessel that can say to God, God, here I am. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to see it. I don't, I just, just obey God. I believe, Sid, that the pathway to the supernatural is love. Uh, what moved Jesus to do the miracles wasn't faith. What moved Jesus, the motivation behind those miracles was love. Faith work with love. 
And I have seen the most incredible miracles when I see that compassion falling upon people. And it's incredible. You don't have any expectation of something good coming in your life. Cuando usted no está a la expectativa de algo bueno que entre a su vida, something bad. pues estará esperando que llegue algo so, malo. Por lo tanto, so therefore, hope la esperanza. is a favorable, confident expectation of something good. Es una expectativa favorable y segura de algo bueno. Quiero que me vea. I'd like you to look at Como me. cristiano, As Christians, usted debe de vivir you should live expectando algo bueno. Expecting something good. You know what's the opposite? ¿Te sabe cuál es lo opuesto? Fear. El temor. Is nothing more. Es nada más. That to believe something bad is coming. Que el creer que algo malo está en camino. Wow. That's what fear is. Eso es el temor. Cuando usted está expectando algo malo. When you're expecting something bad. Oh God, son la una de la mañana y mi hijo no ha llegado. Oh, it's one o'clock in the morning. My son's not home yet. Le pasó algo malo. Something bad must have happened to him. No me han, no me han pagado en el trabajo dos semanas. They've not paid me at work for two weeks. Seguro que es que me van a votar. That must mean they're gonna fire me. Tengo un negocio que no lo cierro hace. Hace seis meses. There's a business transaction I can't close on for six months Seguro now. Que es que no se va a dar. That must mean I'm not going to get it. Con ese tipo de esperanza no llega ni a la esquina, viejo. But with that kind of an expectation, you're not even going to make it to the corner, brother. Dios te trajo a este ministerio. But God brought you to this ministry. Para que cambies tu mente. So that you would change your mentality. Ustedes y yo éramos gente negativa. You and I used to be negative nos levantamos people. pensando en que algo malo nos pasaría ese día. We'd wake up in the morning thinking something bad was going to happen that day. Something bad. A la expectativa de algo malo. Ahora cuando vienes acá, but now when you come here, quiero sacarte esa, ¿qué se llama ese cosito que se llama el chip que te han puesto en la cabeza? I want to take out that chip in your head nuevo, and put in something new. Te por la mañana, so you can wake up in the morning. Y veas al cielo. Look up to heaven. Diga, something good is coming upon me. When is the moment, or when is that when you get distracted? Write it down, please. You get distracted from your purpose, call, goals in life when you lose your conviction. Of your focus. And listen, when you lose your conviction, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, when you lose your conviction or the conviction of your focus, purpose, call, assignment, distraction comes easy. A young person. Very young, 20 years old. She hasn't finished college. And the devil will send someone, a person, a young boy. She's on fire for Jesus. She is focused and she has conviction she needs to finish college. But this young man came, sent by the enemy. The enemy used Peter. He can use anybody to distract you from what you convicted, what you have conviction of. Can you put your hands together, people? So, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident. Another translation says, have conviction. Being confident of this very thing that he who which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the date of Jesus Christ. You teach power. Power needs to be demonstrated. It's not about teaching power. Oh, I can tell you seven steps about the power. No, power needs to be demonstrated. Oh, Rabba Shita Rabba. Did you hear what I said, people? What, what is a demonstration? It's a visible manifestation 
is an open to the five senses. People can see, people can hear. Why somebody says, why, why the demonstration? Because when you don't do the manifestation, when you don't do the demonstration, you're not a credible witness. God never authorized the church to preach the gospel without demonstration. He never said go into all the world and speak nice words to them because the, my people, God said, my people is hurting. My people are sick. My people are afflicted. My people are oppressed. I want you to demonstrate my power. I want you to tell them I died for them on the cross. I am beyond. I am the provider. I am your healer. I am, I am, I am God, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody have to shout. Somebody have to shout. If you came this morning, if you came this morning, you're about to see a visible manifestation. Because if I only teach, I preach half of the gospel. Mire esto. Mire esto. Entiende su mano. Ese representa a tu hijo. Comienza a dar por tu hijo. Comienza a dar. Dino, quiero hacer fuego. Mire esto. Mire estos niños. Tráigame esos niños. Tráigame niños, niños, niños. De verdad que acá en este encuentro sobrenatural en Caracas 2016 se está sintiendo el poder de Dios. Puedo sentir el poder sobrenatural de Dios en mi vida. Yo sentí un fuego en la tarima y me quebranté mucho. As God lifted the remnant of this nation, the children began to have an encounter in a genuine, pure, and impacting way like nothing they had ever felt before. So awesome what Tim Apostle Maldonado, he's so amazing, his book How to Walk in the Supernatural, I very recommend, it's powerful, it's so powerful. See you next video guys, thank you.